All right, we're group seven and today we're gonna to be talking about deep fake security. Uh, my name is Pedro Feliciano. We also have Justin Roberts here and Andrew Mitchell. Uh, we're all BCIS majors. We're gonna be graduating this semester as well. I wanna go through a preview of what we're gonna be talking about today. So we're gonna cover what a deep fake is, why deep fakes are harmful, deep fake security softwares that are in place today and the future of deep fakes. A little bit about what a deep fake is. For context, a deep fake is synthetic media in which a person in an existing image or video is replaced by somebody else. And it looks just like them as the picture here shows. We have an original picture and then we have the deep fake picture. And in the top right corner of it, we have the person's face that was put onto the original picture. So it's just a form of artificial intelligence. They use deep learning to make images of fake events Hence the name deep fake. Who creates deep fakes? Uh, deep fakes are usually created uh, for funny videos and sadly enough, pornogra por pornographic videos and content. Um, so this can ruin people's reputation. It can make them look like they're doing things they're not supposed to be doing. This could also be done by hackers or anybody who wants to hurt somebody's reputation. Um, a Japanese AI company, Datagrid, made a full body deep fake that can, they can create a person from scratch. This was only supposed to be used for promotional purposes, such as putting clothes onto artificial intelligence to see how marketing would go for these clothes. But um, they're also heavily used in the movie industry to de-age actors. So you make actors look a lot younger. That's been a, a big thing in a lot of uh, movies recently. And then they're usually if they're not used for funny content or pornographic content, it's gonna be used for malicious intent um, just to hurt people's reputation. And the threats of it, we have, like I was saying, problems with personal reputation, uh, misinformation. If the video isn't discredited quickly enough, people can take that as truth, as we've seen in this new age of quick data being everywhere. People just believe whatever's on the internet as soon as they see it. And this can create a zero trust society where we don't know what media is real and what media is fake. If we can't get to the bottom of this quick enough and get this off the internet and out of people's hands. Um, and this can be very life-threatening or threatening to somebody's reputation, as I've said. Uh, we've already seen presidents be deep faked and in in people believing that they said stuff that they didn't say. So it's a lot of fake news just being around the internet nowadays. And I'm gonna hand it off to, oh, actually I'm covering this one still. Um, why is it harmful? So as we can see in this uh, GIF on the bottom or the right side, this can be harmful because somebody could believe that this is real. There's a lot of people out there that will believe this is real and take it as real. And there's just a big danger around it. People can believe this stuff and that can be very threatening. Deep fakes are becoming more sophisticated and it gets harder to detect them as they keep making security measures tighter and tighter, these hackers can go in and read the code and learn how it works. And they can shift how they act and how they code and how they hack into making people believe these are realer than they are. And if you cannot discredit these videos and audio, then they're just gonna be taken as truth and that's very harmful. Now I'm gonna be handing it off to Justin. Sure. So We've heard why deep fakes can be so harmful, but luckily there are a lot of security measures taken in place to um, try and combat some of these. So um, the, a lot of software that's used to combat deep fakes uh, analyzes photos and videos to give like a, a confidence score to uh, the user on whether or not the uh, images that they're looking at may have been like artificial created or artificially created or like uh, essentially not real. So uh, Microsoft is really, uh, kind of leading the way in a lot of this technology. They've developed a specific deep fake detection software um, and it's still not that uh, common for public use. It is normally only used like amongst third parties or like for uh, government use, any like independent uh, companies like that. So me and you can't go uh, and just buy this technology as of yet, but I was, I'm sure as um, deep fakes become more common and people have a, a need to be able to use things like that, uh, it'll start to be extended more to the public. So we can head to the next slide. 
So why is uh, deep fake security helpful? So obviously if you have a video that's going around with your face on it, but it's not you, um, you wanna be able to clear your name. So uh, having security to uh, kind of discredit any false videos is definitely a plus. Uh, fake material can be dismissed before it uh, becomes widespread. So before it even has the chance to uh, really ruin somebody's credibility, uh, deep fake security can analyze it and shut it down straight from the start. And then lastly, it can prevent the spread of false information. As Pedro mentioned earlier, we're kind of in an age of um, fake news nowadays. So it's good to be able to distinguish the real from the fake. So those are all reasons that uh, the security that's emerging is very helpful. So some of the softwares that are used to discover deep fakes. Um, some of the softwares like FakeBuster, DeepFake, Forensics, and uh, DeepWare are all used to uh, detect deepfake technology. They all use um, different methods of doing so, but for the most part, all of these um, services are designed to be able to use, be used alongside video calls as well as analyze um, previous videos already recorded. So in the backgrounds at, are specifically for video calls in the background, these apps would run what they call imposter detection. Um, and it scans like a particular face on the screen. And what the screen capture does, it like zooms in and focuses on that face um, where it's positioned at. It does like face tracking, face frames, and segmentation. And uh, the deep fake, deep fake prediction on each video is uh, then given to the user. So how we talked about earlier, you get that confidence score, you get to see whether or not the uh, technology that you're using believes that that's a fabricated video or not. So I believe the next slide is the best software to use. So as I already mentioned, Microsoft is kind of leading the way with their video authenticator tools. It's considered to be the most useful tool in deepfake uh, detection software uh, as, as of right now. Um, it can analyze a still photo or a video to provide that confidence score that we mentioned. It detects the blending boundary of uh, deep fakes uh, grayscale elements and a lot of things that wouldn't be able to uh, be detected by just our eyes alone. And then also along with that, just general good practices that, that are recommended for uh, detecting deep fakes is looking at like subtle cues in people's faces. So whether it be like inconsistent blinking or like a lot of fading around their facial features um, or just any inconsistencies in their hair, anything like that, that would be able to uh, help you detect any type of uh, deep or excuse me, deep fake attack. So I'll hand the next slide off to Andrew. So there are advantages to the availability of deep fake security software. And those advantages are that news organizations are able to use the software to fact check and analyze videos that are suspected of being deep faked for integrity reasons. And it's especially useful for political campaigns when their when their candidate is being defamed by a deep fake video and they wish to clear his name of any dirt on his name. And the, the downside to it is that it's not available to the general public. So if someone, for example, a student in, in Denton, Texas, something was said about him and there was a video that was doctored of, of, of said person saying that, that person doesn't have that technology to, to be able to deconstruct and, and show that the video is fake. The, but the future of deep fakes, um, it's not certain. Hackers are making deep fake technology more sophisticated, and it's much harder for deep fake security technology to be able to detect any inconsistencies or defects and resemblances of people made by deep fakes. And then I'll handle this slide. Um, in conclusion, we talked about what a deep fake is, why deep fakes are harmful, deep fake security softwares and their ups and downs, and also the uncertain future of deep fakes. And that will conclude our presentation as group seven on deep fakes. Thank you so much for listening.